So, let's take a minute to discuss the Switch's 2018 lineup for the whole rest of the year, starting from June until December. Because a lot of people, a lot of people are talking about how the Switch is pretty much dead this year, it's dying, there's no games this year, blah blah blah, everything's been delayed to next year. A um, couple things. We were never promised Metroid Prime or Bayonetta this year. Fire Emblem we were, and Fire Emblem was delayed. Damon X Machina we didn't even know about until now, so that's going to be a 2019 game. Same thing with Ninjala. This little infographic here was posted by Nintendo UK. They posted it, I believe, on Twitter. And it's been making the rounds. Uh, but really, it just shows you, like, and this is only some of the content. It's only some of the content. It's still missing out on a lot of other stuff, like a lot of the great indie content we're going to be getting, like Blade Strangers. Um, but yeah, this pretty much shows it. it. There's a reason why certain things were not shown at E3. People fail to realize that what Nintendo does is Nintendo does not want to keep showing you the same games over and over and over again for three and four years, like Sony has done with things like God of War, Death Stranding, Spider Man. You know, they, Nintendo's not about that. They don't like, you know, keeping you waiting like Square Enix, where they we've waited so long for Kingdom Hearts 3, people waited so long for Final Fantasy 15. You know, they, they, Nintendo used to. They really used to. They're, they're very apparent about it with the Zelda series. The Zelda series constantly, they, they end up showing those games a bit too early. Uh, they, they, they pretty much learn their lesson after Twilight Princess. Because, uh, Twilight Princess, you look at some of the first trailers of that game, and it's almost a completely different game than when it finally came out. Uh, Skyward Sword was a bit better about that. Breath of the Wild, though, they went a bit too ambitious with it, and that's why Breath of the Wild seemed like it took forever to come out. But, for most of their games, they're pretty good about not revealing them until they come out within the year or two. Uh, case in point, they've been doing this a lot with the Switch. They've also been doing a lot with the 3DS. The difference between this year and last year, what people fail to realize, is this year's E3 was back to basics for Nintendo. They wanted to showcase the games that were coming out within the next year or so. That way they can show you guys what you're playing now. Because that's that, that's what it's about. Games are meant to be played, not waited on. I mean, yes, it's great that we have content for the future, like Metro Prime 4 and Bayonetta 3 and Yoshi. But if it's not, if those games aren't coming out for a good year or two, then what's the point of showing me when you should be showing me when am I, what am I going to be playing this summer? When am, what am, when am I going to be playing this fall and this holiday and next spring? Those are the games that really are the closest that we need to take a look at. Last year's E3, the Switch was brand new. Brand new system, so they really wanted to tell us. They wanted to show us long term what they were doing with the Switch. That's why they announced things like Prime 4 and the Yoshi game and then uh, Pokemon Gen 8. And then during the Game Awards they did the same thing with Platinum Games with Bayonetta 3. They're showing us their long-term support for the system, but when it comes to E3, they're still just going to show you the stuff that's coming out soon. It's just it's just how it is, how it's all how they've always been. The only reason last year was different was because it was the Switch's first year. They wanted to get people on board to show them this is what we're going to have in the long term, and that it was smart to do that because you really got to think. Every year around August or September, we usually get a big direct anyways. So we're going to get a direct in a couple months uh, following E3. It's usually a big meaty direct. With Smash Bros. coming out at the end of the year, we'll probably get a Smash Direct like we have before. And then you got to think, in January, we'll, we'll more than likely get a Pokemon Direct because they have all they unveiled the newest Pokemon generations with X and Y and with Sun and Moon in January with Pokemon Directs. And then we'll probably get a Spring Direct sometime February, March, April, like we have every year. So we don't need everything at E3. We really don't. 
Smash Bros. is coming out this year, and it's a big system seller. So, of course, they were going to focus on that. And, of course, they were going to show off some other games coming out this year, like Mario Party, like Pokemon. And, really, when you, when you really put it into perspective, it was a good thing that Fire Emblem was delayed. It was a good thing. Why? Because this year's already packed. When you're talking about big JRPGs, we have, for the summer, we have Octopath Traveler, that is exclusive, coming out next month, July 13th. And then in the fall and winter, we have Pokemon coming out November. You know? So they, then we got other things mixed in, like, you know, Monster Hunter and World Ends With You. They're different kinds of JRPGs. But the fact of the matter is, we have a lot of exclusive JRPG content coming this year already. Uh, Fire Emblem, it, it's a lot better to delay that to the spring. Fire Emblem, is a, had, for the past several years, has been more of a, of a spring release anyways. So it makes complete, perfect sense that they did that. And, you know, like I said, it'll, it'll be better for it. Because the fact of the matter is we have so much stuff this year already that putting it to next year will just make next year's lineup even better while not making this year's ultra crowded. It gives each game that we're getting this year enough enough room to breathe. Plus, by having Fire Emblem next year, that means we're getting Fire Emblem, we're getting uh, Yoshi, we're getting Pokemon Gen 8, we're getting Damon X Machina, Ninjala, uh, and there's still potential for Metro Prime 4 or Bayonetta 3, either 2019 or beyond that. Uh, not to mention, there's still an unannounced Pikmin 4 game somewhere out there. But as far as this year, we have major releases every month. Beginning with June, you know, I'm already I'm already playing Sushi Striker The Way of Sushido. Came out the beginning of the month. And they already dropped Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion DLC. In just about a week, we'll be playing Mario Tennis Aces. And then a couple days after that, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle Donkey Kong Adventure. This is all exclusive content for the Switch, all in the month of June. Two big DLC packs for two very successful games that came out last year, 2017, as well as two brand new exclusives, one a new IP, one a long-running multiplayer series that started on the N64, well, technically started with the Virtual Boy, but we're not going to get into that. Starting next month, Exclusively, you're going to get Octopath Traveler on the 13th alongside Captain Toad Treasure Tracker on the 13th. You're also going to get um, uh, you're also going to get several other uh, content just throughout the summer. Things like Crash and Sane Trilogy comes out June 29th. You know, Overcooked 2 comes out in August. Dark Souls comes out sometime this summer. These are multi-platforms, but these are big third-party releases that each have their own fan base of gamers. Going back to exclusives, in August, you get Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Monster Hunter is a huge series. It's gotten even more popular with Monster Hunter World. Uh, and people have been wanting Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate localized for a while. And it's exclusive for the Switch here in the U.S., outside Japan. In Japan, there is a 3S version, but outside Japan, it's going to be exclusive to the Switch. August 28th. That's a big hardcore title, big JRPG title. Uh, big multiplayer online emphasis. It's gonna it's gonna do well. All um, in September, we have SNK Heroines, which isn't an exclusive per se, but we do get exclusive physical copy on the Switch. For the PS4, it's gonna be digital only unless you buy the hundred and ten dollar edition that's on Nis's website. So the game's gonna have a much bigger fan base on the Switch because of that exclusive physical copy. September also has Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torn of the Golden Country, coming out, which is going to be both DLC and it's going to have a physical release. And that's also exclusive to the Switch, a big Japanese RPG. Um, in October, you have Super Mario Party, the very beginning of the month. In the middle of the month, you have Starlink Battle for Atlas, which, while it's not an exclusive, it does have the exclusive Star Fox content with the R-Wing. Uh, you can play as Fox McCloud, and it has exclusive Star Wolf missions. So exclusive content for our version that no other version has. In November, you're going to have a brand new couple of Pokemon titles. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Uh, and that's going to be great for Pokemon fans. It's going to be great for Pokemon Go fans. Um, and it's going to be a great co-op title for families and friends in general. So that's going to be massively successful. Pokemon just sells units. And then last but not least, December, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which 
it's Smash Brothers. It's going to be the biggest Smash Brothers game yet. Um, it's going to do massively well. And these are all exclusives or games with exclusive content that I've pretty much pretty much stated. So when you really look at it, they're all different genres, all different styles. They don't all look samey. Sushi Striker, you know, uh, very easy pick up and play, very addictive, unique, uh, fast paced puzzle game with RPG elements, or big adventure story mode. Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion, very unique third person shooter. DLC content, of course. Uh, Mario Tennis Aces, very wacky, arcadey, you know, uh, sports title with the Mario spin. Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Donkey Kong Adventure, you know, turn based strategy. Uh, Octopath Traveler, old school JRPG with a uh, great sprite based art style. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, 3D puzzle platformer. Uh, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Like I said, big hunting JRPG, lots of co-op online. SNK Heroines, classic 2D, you know, fighting game. Zimmer Chronicles 2, real-time action JRPG. Uh, Super Mario Party, party game, of course. Starlink Battle for Atlas, a uh, big space shooter with an emphasis on open world. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. A uh, more casual take on a classic JRPG franchise with monster collecting. And Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the biggest party fighter in the industry. All of those games are unique. No two games are similar. Even in the JRPG genre, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna, The Golden Country, and Octopath Traveler play very, very differently and they look very differently, and they feel very differently. It's not like all these other games on other platforms where it's like, you know, you look at The Division 2 and Dying Light 2, and they, they you know, you look at uh, just all these similar, like, gray and brown shooters and, you know, third person or first person, and it's all, you know, hyper-realistic fighting for humankind survival. It all looks similar. It all looks similar. These are all exclusive experiences on the Switch. We're getting an exclusive experience every month, at least one or two every month, from now until December. And we already have stuff promised for 2019, like Fire Emblem, Daemon X Machina, Ninjala, Yoshi, and Pokemon Gen 8. And, like I said, we still get our usual Nintendo Directs. We're probably getting a Smash Direct and a Pokemon Direct in the next year. Uh, within the next year's time frame, if um, history repeats itself. So again, did we really need to see Metro Prime 4 so badly at E3? Out of all these games, do we need just Metro Prime 4? No, we really, really don't. This, this, like I said, this E3, um, Nintendo did what they needed to do. And I am completely... 100 100% satisfied with what they showed and with what I'm going to be playing in the coming months. I'm going to be very very busy on my Switch from now until December.